Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to have a look at the newly released JA8086. Actually it's not new, it was out it was out in October but only an alpha version and today we have the final beta version which, which is available for everybody. So you can go in in the video description and find the link to the to the scene. Uh, you need of course to find the ROM and please don't ask ROM in this video because I cannot give you publicly the ROMs in YouTube but you can mess around and you can search around on Google and possibly find them. So first of all let's have a look at two of the most complex maybe uh, aspects of this synth because in the JP8000 and also in the JP8080 the sound is made up of a uh, performance which you can see here we have a performance loaded which is made up of two different sound or different patches so to speak one is called a or upper and the second one is called b or lower and they are usually set to two different midi channels so if you send midi notes to channel one you will play the patch which is on the first and if you send midi notes to midi channel two the second slot will be selected so for example here we have a standard one of the first performance that is loaded so i have a synchro sound here and a juno bass so if i now send for example i have a lead here and you see i'm sending out to midi channel one so if i play some note they are now going just to channel one so the first one and if you set the midi notes out and the midi channel out to number two we will have the second You can set them up, of course, to receive MIDI notes on the same channel. So if we now set them up to MIDI channel, both of them to MIDI channel 1, and if we go back here and send notes to MIDI channel 1, you see they are playing, uh, playing together. Or you can also send everything to MIDI channel 3, which will trigger both of them and the arpeggiator if it's available usually uh, it will trigger the arpeggiator so we are now playing the performance so it's like having it's like sending to the same channel in this case and if you of course if you open the arpeggiator the arpeggiator will play okay not really interesting in this in this case so let's go back to channel one because i only want to have a lead sound here and the same will happen to part to another instance that i have here so let's move this a little bit out of the screen and let's bring the second one which is uh, on another performance and in this case i only want the juno sub bass playing so again i have set up this track to play only on channel two and this is what's what's coming out that's a little bit of a liaison maybe and if i want to play the sound which is on midi channel one i need to change the midi channel or the output of the track or again if you want to play them both together you can set them up to the same channel And again, I only want it to be on channel two. So let's now have a listen to this small demo track that I've been using. So you have two instances, one of the first track here, which is playing a lead sound from this performance, and a second one, which is playing some bass sound from another performance. And I also have some drums uh, using a courtesy of Nitonet, which is a 909 emulation. Here we go. And then we also have some kicks very basic straight four on the floor kick coming out of kick three by Sonic Academy. And let's now try to insert some kind of automation because another nice thing, of course, uh, is that the JP8000 or JP8080 were digital synths, and so basically MIDI synths, and you can automate any, almost any parameter. And you can do it 
this in a couple of ways. You can do it using the manual, sending some specific CC commands. For example, let's go to the automation logic. So let's press A to go to automation. And for example, if you want to modulate the cutoff frequency, you can use the CC74, I believe, and for resonance it was 71. But of course, uh, in the more recent version, uh, they have implemented a full automation also in the same, in the JA86. And the same concept applies to the automation. So if you want to automate a cutoff frequency, we need to send it to channel one or to part one or to the upper. Or if you want to automate the second one, of course, we need to use the second. So let's say we now have, and I want to automate something on the lead. So let's go to the lead sound. And I have, again, the, the, the synchro sound, the synchro solo uh, preset playing. So if we now want to automate the cutoff frequency, for example, I open and close it a little bit, we should go to the automation here, to part A. Of course, we have two parts again. So we have part A and B. And we need to use part A, of course, because we are using only the upper or the first one or the A part. So let's go to the, for example, here, A filter cutoff frequency. And if you see now if we move things around a little bit you see moving the automation control in logic will move these the corresponding knob so they also implemented this nice automation so that the knob will respond of course to the movement so let's try to make some wobbly curve for the cutoff frequency and so if i now play the track back let's solo it for a little bit you will see that the cutoff frequency is going up and down and the chain and the, and the sound of course will change yeah maybe we need to raise it a little bit because it's the filter this way is a little bit too close and the sound become almost unnoticeable okay let's bring it back Okay, that's it, fine. And let's try to automate also the resonance. So let's go back here to the automation in logic. Let's go to the plugin. Let's go again to part A and scroll down to A filter resonance. And let's try to open the resonance a little bit. And again, if you see, we can see that if I move the knob, the if I move the automation lane up and down, the knob will follow. So let's try to make a straight line so open it up a little bit and let's have a let's have a listen to how this changes and you can see that the two filters are moving let's try to fiddle around also with the filter envelope I think that the decay is set a little bit too too low for this. In fact, it was a little bit clicking, so we need to raise it a little bit more. And then we can also try and change the, the, the slow lower the decay, the attack, for example. So let's go back here to the filter again, part A, and let's choose the filter and attack. So the envelope attack. So this knob will move now. So we can now try to make small adjustment to the to the yeah like something like this yeah not too much and maybe also to the decay so let's go back bring the plugin part A and let's scroll down to the A filter decay so let's try to again automate things a little bit so let's make it. Yeah, like something like this. So I want it to, yeah, to be more, more longer at the, at the center. So again, let's have a listen to the final track on the soloid, and then we we'll try to listen to that, to that in context. Yeah, maybe we need to raise a little bit the attack as well. Maybe also the release a little bit. No, by automating this. 
Okay, so let's try to listen to it in the context of the whole mix. Let's remove the solo here. I'm going to remove this mute. Yes, I had to fiddle around with the cutoff frequency because it was a little bit too too low. And let's try to do the same to the bass part. So let's close this instance and bring back the second one, which is my bass sound. And the bass sound in this case is on channel 2 or part B or the lower part. So we can select it and try again to automate the cutoff frequency and maybe the filter envelope again. So let's try to get here. So let's go to the plugin to automate part B in this case. And you do the same. So you go to part B, cutoff frequency, for example. And let's try to draw a very quick curve again in here. And you see again that the knob is moving. Let's try to make something really simple, such as this. Yeah, and also, yeah, and also the resonance. So let's go back here. Yeah, I already have selected the resonance here, and let's try to bring it up. So the sound will be a little more TB303 or Squelcher. Yes, yeah, something like this. I hope it's not much. So let's now listen to the, the only the bass track. Okay, and you can hear that the bass sound changes quite dramatically. So let's again try to automate the attack, for example, on the filter, so make it a little bit less aggressive. So let's try to slower a little bit the attack rate. So again, let's go here to the filter attack and make it a little bit slower. So it's very fast at the beginning and then it will become slower. And also to, let's try to lower a little bit the filter decay. So let's go back to the plugin part B again. Let's scroll down to the filter decay in this case and let's try to bring it down a little bit. Yeah, for example, from here to here. Yes. Let's listen to the bass sound only first. And you can hear as the 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 K going down will lower and change the sound quite dramatically. So basically that's it for today. And if you like the video, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you will be informed my, of my new videos. And for the last part, let's play this track with the automation selected. And that's it. Bye bye and see you in future videos.